Concussion, very simply, is a mild traumatic brain injury. The traumatic part of that is that it's not something that happens without trauma. There has to be an impact, there has to be a cause, and that doesn't always have to be a direct impact to the head. Fundamentally what's happening when you get concussed is the brain is moving within the skull because the, the brain is surrounded by a fluid, it's encased within that, or suspended in that. And when you're hit hard on the head or in the neck or chest area, the brain is impacted against the side of the skull and it can cause a chemical shakeup of some of the chemicals around the brain uh, and actually some, some cell death if the, if the impact is hard enough. With concussion we all recognise that there's, there's no chances being taken. Obviously we've all seen instances where it's obvious, I mean if you lose consciousness or you look really, really dazed or confused, they, they display like unsteadiness or a lack of balance, that's another obvious sign. We call that criteria one. Uh, those ones are obvious, it's obvious to everybody and, and they've got to be removed. But the ones where they're a little bit more ambiguous is just a little bit of a delay to get back into the line or a little bit slower on their feet and that's where we do symptom checks. Um, that's why we do those HIAs, those head injury assessments. In the amateur game, the community game, you don't have a HIA, if there's any suspicion at all, either you didn't like the original impact, if the player is behaving not as you suspect they should, you, you, you take the decision to take them out. That's not any different than how we, we deal with it in the elite game. We have a slightly different process to it, but fundamentally we're just identifying suspicion. And if we are suspicious, elite game or, or, or amateur, we're still taking you out. That allows the independent doctor to review if you're actually safe to go back on. Not only risking another head injury, but also if you do get a concussion, you're not going to be thinking straight and not going to be controlling your body in the proper fine movements. So it also risks other injuries to other places. There's a test that we also do on the computers at the start of the year. Everybody sits it at the start of the year to, to find a baseline, like you say. A um, number of different tests on there. I think there's some reactionary. Uh, memory and then stuff which kind of combines the two. Um, so everybody does that, finds a baseline for them um, and then when you actually end up do getting concussion it's something which you need to pass uh, or hit your baseline to, to come back and, um, and re-enter into the, to the programme. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read a list of 10 words. Mm -hmm. Let me get to the end of it, and then you're going to repeat back to me as many as you can in any order. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Baby, monkey, perfume, sunset, iron, dollar, honey, mirror, saddle, anchor. Anchor, saddle, baby, sunset, mirror, monkey, dollar, Okay. I'm going to read a list of numbers to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read them in one order, mm -hmm. repeat them in reverse order. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Seven, eight, two. Two, eight, seven. Four, one, eight, three. Three, eight, one, four. Perfect. Okay, getting slightly longer now. One seven nine two six six nine seven one. Okay. Okay. So same amount of numbers now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Same again. You ready? Mm -hmm. Two six four eight one seven seven eight four. In the elite game, there's a post-game HIA. We call it a HIA 2, it's your second one. So that's whether you pass or fail your first one, you have to do one after the game. You also have to do a third one after two sleeps. So there is a follow-up to this. If you have a first half HIA, that 40 minutes of a second half might be enough time for symptoms to start to develop. They may develop over the, over the next two days. We don't pick them up until the HIA 3, but that's just allowing these, these later signs. And about a third of concussions actually are only symptomatic two days later. If a concussion has been confirmed, they've failed their HIA at one stage or another. And if a concussion has been confirmed, they've got to go through a process. Then in the elite game, that is, on average, a 12-day return. There's a few examples of where it's seven, but in the main, it's a 12-day return. And the main reason for that is what concussion does not like is it does not like exercise, or it doesn't like stress. It doesn't like even cognitive exercise, too much tablet time. It reacts badly to that. 
And fundamentally what the concussion return to play is, either in the elite game or the community game, is that reintroduction to, it might be schoolwork, TV time, and in the case of an elite player, exercise. There's a graduated return for all types of different players. So if you've had a concussion before, or you've been knocked out before, then there's a, there's a longer kind of period. If you haven't, then there's a, there's a shorter period. So it all caters differently for different players uh, in accordance with what they've previously had. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a process with many different steps, but obviously it's there to, to make sure that the player's in the safest possible state before they, they join back into training and then eventually back into, into a game. You know, when people do get concussions, then your reactions are affected. Being able to think clearly under pressure is affected. You know, all these tiny little things which don't show up on the, on the outside or on your body anywhere are affected and ultimately they're the probably key things which allow you to perform to your best on the weekend. So you have to get back to full fitness in that sense to be able to go and put a good performance in on the weekend. We've seen some people who have, you know, seriously been affected by it. So knowing that there is a process in, in place to get us back onto the onto the pitch as soon as possible, but safely is very reassuring. Um, you know, they probably didn't have that, you know, 10 or 20 years ago. And that's obviously resulting, unfortunately, for, you know, people developing different types of brain injuries or early onset of dementia, which obviously we don't want in our game. So, yeah, no, it's massively reassuring. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of tests to do, but, you know, at the end of the day, safety and your health is the main, main priority. The face of what concussion return to looked like has changed so much over the last 10, 11 years. It's symptom limited exercise is our, is our first go-to. We know that concussion doesn't respond well to exercise or, or cognition, so it's just working within the amount of exercise or, or computer or reading that you can do that doesn't bring your symptoms on. In the elite game, there's three days of that symptom limited exercise. Do as much as you can or want to do that doesn't provoke your symptoms. Then we go through that old graduate return to play exercise where we're raising heart rate, where we're raising cognition and skills and in, in, in rugby. And the, we actually do a number of tests before you actually move to that contact stage. So you've got some more formal cognition tests. Can you do some quite quick computer games and some memory tests? Only after you've proven that your faculties are normal that we start to engage in contact. And even after that stage, we have to consult with, a, with an external party that the concussion protocol has been followed through, that the player has been fine, and that the contact, contact stage didn't flesh up anything new. So there's quite a number of stages before we actually get back to playing rugby. Okay, those words that we did early on. I'm not gonna read any back to you. Mm -hmm. Repeat as many as you can from the original list. Monkey, baby, saddle, anchor, Honey, iron, perfume, sunset. So, perfect. So the score you've got today is above your baseline, according to this concussion not confirmed. Okay. So brilliant. Rugby's a super safe game. It really is when when you execute your skill well and are well trained to the level you're going to play at. It is a safe game. I really feel for these people that are coming forward now with some, some dementia issues and some brain-related issues now. That, that's awful and it's such a challenge, but th the rules of engagement in rugby now are not what they were in the, in the 90s and the early 2000s. It, it is different. Obviously, the proof will be in retrospective analysis to how this current cohort go, but we know so much more than we did then, and I'd hope our behaviours reflect in, in more positive health in rugby players when they're older. We do know that reducing the tackle height to the sternum will protect the ball carrier. Obviously the lower we go, the risk change, and the risk is not zero. Yes, with a lower tackle height, the lower you get to fast moving hips and knees that are hard objects. Yes, the risk maybe does shift slightly to the tackler. The risk of concussion can never be zero, but good tackle technique, and it'll get close to it. I think we've made more strides in improving our concussion management in the last couple of years than we have probably in the first five years, even at the, end, the onset of the HIA in, in 2012. I think we're getting better at picking it up. I think we're getting better at understanding what a concussion is and what it doesn't like. And that when you do make that step back onto the pitch, you are ready. There's, there's enough processes there to prove that you are. The current incarnation of our concussion identification and process bodes well for the long-term health of both our elite and, and amateur players.